The Bible tells us in Psalms 24 that the world and everything in it belongs to the Lord. This tells us that everyone who is living here on earth belongs to the Lord. No one can deny that he was created by God. Of course, that those who do not believe in God, who think that they were just um, they were just born here on earth through science and they find themselves living because they believe in biology. But the Bible tells us that we are created in the image of God. So everyone who is under the sun is a creature, is a being that came from God. Therefore, the same God who created everything and everything in the world and everything on earth is concerned about his creation and about everyone who is living in the earth. Now, the reason why I'm presenting this message like this, I want to draw your attention to a message that I want to speak to those who are on authority and honorables. Reason I'm sharing like this is that there are those who believe that they have created themselves, there are those who believe that they are ruling with their own power, they, there are those who believe that they are not accountable to the Creator. Yet God is the Creator of everything, the possessor of heaven and earth, who is the ultimate leader and who is the ultimate king. So I'm here to help, I'm here to present a message that will help and give understanding that if these leaders who are also put there by God according to Daniel, that he, God, is the one who put kings and also removes kings, this can help them to understand that the same God who put them on authority has the power to give them wisdom to rule or to, uh, to lead. Yes, uh, God has also power to remove them whenever he wants to. So I just want to draw your attention to two kings that I want to uh, use to, today in order to present this message, which I believe that if these people who are on authority in, in different capacity, uh, despite that they are presidents or kings or they are uh, uh, leading um, maybe a province, they are leading a Kamban, they are leading whatever uh, they were given to lead. There's a certain wisdom that I believe they must get from the Lord. Now, I want to show you and also challenge those who don't believe that God can be involved even in the economics of the nations, in economics of countries, because they think that it has nothing to do with the spirituality. This is the problem that we have with those in authority and with those who are so-called learned, the intellectuals. I once quoted this on my previous presentation that sometimes it's very difficult for those who are learned, for those who are called professionals, and not all, so that I will not be misquoted because there are those who also know God. But some, they don't believe that anything that is to do with running of a nation anything that is uh, to do with leading a company, anything that is to do with doing economics or to run economy or finances has nothing to do with God. This is a mistake that people do. So today I'm going to read a scripture in Genesis chapter uh, 41. And I'm going to give you just a a, a brief uh, background and, and an understanding so that people will know that what I'm uh, trying to share tonight, what I'm trying to share today uh, is from the scripture. And uh, there's an example that is existing and that was practical and that helped a certain nation to prosper. There's a, uh, there's a story of Joseph. Joseph was the son of Jacob. And for those who understand the Bible, understand uh, how Joseph was sold by his brothers and end up in Egypt. When he was in Egypt, he went, he end up in the prison when he was framed by Potiphar's wife. But in that, there was a plan of God. In that, in that prison, he managed to interpret the dreams of two people who were the workers or who were the servants of Pharaoh. It happened, to, it happened that after some time, these servants were uh, <clears throat> removed from prison 
and one was exalted and one was killed. And uh, the one who was exalted and retained uh, his job was the one who remembered Joseph. And uh, it happened that the king, the pharaoh, had a dream and he dreamt this dream two consecutive um, times in a different form of um, of something that I'm going to share that had helped him and it solved the problem in his nation as a leader or as a king or as a president. Now, the Bible tells us about the dream of Pharaoh, but because it is a very long uh, a, a very long chapter. I would urge you to go and read uh, Genesis chapter uh, 41. But however, uh, there is a, 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 a verse that I'm going to just mention so that at least you understand and also appreciate that God is above all power. So the Bible says that in verse 23, after they have tried to interpret uh, the magicians and those who were called by Pharaoh and failed. The Bible says that uh, in, verse, in verse 24, And a thin head devoured seven uh, good heads. So I told to the magicians, but there was no one who could explain it. Then Joseph said to Pharaoh, The, dream, the dreams of Pharaoh are one. God has shown Pharaoh what is about what he is about to do and the seven good cows are seven years and seven good heads are seven years the dream are one and the seven thin ugly cows which came up after them are seven years and the and the seven empty heads uh, bleated by the east wind are the seven years of famine this is the thing which i have spoken to the to the pharaoh God has shown Pharaoh what he is about to do. Indeed, uh, seven years of great plenty will come throughout all the land of Egypt. But after them, seven years of famine will arise, and all the plain will be forgotten in the land of Egypt, and, and, and the famine will deplete the land. So the plain will not be known in the land because of the famine, uh, because of the famine following. Right. Let me jump. Now, therefore, let Pharaoh uh, select a discerning and wise man and set over, over the land of Egypt. And let Pharaoh do this. Let him appoint officers over all the land to collect one-fifth of the produce of the land of Egypt in, in seven plant for years. And then gather all the food of those good years that are coming and store up grain under the authority of Pharaoh and let them keep food in the cities. Then that food shall be then that food shall be uh, preserved for the for the land for seven years of famine we shall be in the land of Egypt and the land may not perish during famine. Now I want us to pay attention to the wisdom that Joseph gave the king. They were magicians. They were eco uh, those who were in uh, the, 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 what can I say, the economists of the land of Egypt. Those who were able to know how they can maneuver to do agriculture and so forth, so to speak. But when the king had this dream, no one could interpret the dream. And it calls and it only it was only God who was able to give Pharaoh as much as Pharaoh was not one who believed in a true God. But God was concerned with the land of Egypt for the reason that we all know that the people of, of Israel were preserved in Egypt. So it could be that God was seeing the future of his people that they were going to be saved in the land of Egypt. But this is beside the point that I want to share tonight. Uh, the message that I want to share is concerning the wisdom that uh, was received by Pharaoh from Joseph. After his magicians failed, Joseph interpreted the dream and he told Pharaoh that there are going to be seven years of plenty. And during those seven years of plenty, 
he suggested that they must take one fifth of the produce and preserve it and put it in the barn that way like of the government in charge uh, that were in charge that the government was in charge of this was a nation storehouse nation storages in order to preserve for the seven years that was coming the seven years of famine so king pharaoh he received the wisdom and it happened exactly as what joseph had interpreted and it saved the economy and it saved the nation of egypt so what is my point here there is also the spirituality that can help the nations the wisdom that can help the nation the wisdom that can help those on authority it is unfortunate that the only thing that these nations know is only to look on those we have studied economy but if we check what is happening the world over not only one nation even the examples which are very close to us for some of you who observe the economy and what was happening especially even in, in our economy in Zimbabwe you realize that the people who were trying to save our economy were very learned were very um, articulate as far as their figures are concerned but at the end of the day there's nothing that was coming out that would bring the preservation or to bring the preservation of a nation as things continue to go in circles they had their wisdom they had their understanding but sometimes it failed to save them so the point that i want to put across is that god who is the possessor of heaven he understand also how the economy can be run so the spirituality of any nation can also help if people also understand that besides those women need to help us to run the economy to help us to lead in the issues that concern our day to day living there are those who are also anointed and given the wisdom by god to guide a nation joseph only spoke what god had told him what god was about to do and they implemented he then asked the king to send other people and to appoint officers who were going to manage and to be in charge of what uh, had been uh, planned by god of that which was uh, suggested which was also an answer that came from god this is where i also want to say that god if he is given an answer, a, a room he will be able to lead our leaders you'll be able to lead those who are in charge of key areas if they can consult from god not to say they must not implement whatever knowledge they have acquired but you must remember but you must remember that when god created adam he never sent him to school i may sound controversial and i'm not here to say people should not go to school least people miscaught me but you find out that adam managed to name each and every creature an animal with its name without being uh, going or trying to learn elsewhere it was something that was coming out from him he was also given a mandate to till the land the garden of eden with the wisdom and understanding of god without going to any farming school and agriculture school this is not to say people should not do all these things but my point is that the nations have managed to remove god of all wisdom and they are relying with their own wisdom only this has caused the nation not to prosper this has caused many things to not to go right so my point is trying to retain a uh, god on throne in everything that people may do here on earth our nations and our leaders if they put god on his throne you find out that they can lead with the wisdom of god while people and those who are learned can do whatever they do they must also understand that god is also the josephs and the daniels 
who are able to interpret and to tell the seasons and how people can manage and implement certain things with the wisdom to preserve and also to help that which can make the economy move forward. However, the issue of managing and looking for those who may look after the plan that will be presented is up to the kings and the people, but God will be guiding and leading. So I just want us to go again to the book of Daniel, and I want to just, um, uh, let me just explain. If you have time, go and read book of Daniel chapter 2 to 4. You realize that Daniel he managed to interpret the dreams which, ne uh, which the king Nebuchadnezzar had dreamed. The statue that he dreamed and the king had, had a problem uh, with, his, with his magicians and all the people tried to interpret that dream. He also forgot that dream. It took the man of God, it took the one who was anointed by God to interpret that. He managed to tell the king what that dream was and also the meaning. When he explained that, the king realized that there is God in heaven. But besides that, this king did not believe in the God of Daniel. Uh, if you read, I'm sure, chapter 3, the following chapter, you realize that he, it is where the king built a, a, a statue and he managed to um, mobilize people and to force people to worship that statue, an image. This also happened that Daniel, who interpreted the dream of the same king, did not bow to this image. And this same king who saw the hand of God was, was very angry and he wanted to kill Daniel and his companion. They put them in fire, but God preserved them. After they were out there, the same king again dreamt a dream where he saw a tree which was growing and become strong. The interpretation which was given was that the tree was the king, Nebuchadnezzar, who was growing fast. In all that, this king did not believe in God. He also, Daniel also warned the king, and I want to read this scripture so that I can put the point which I want to put across uh, in, from this scripture. The Bible says in chapter 4, verse 27, Therefore, O king, let my advice be accepted to you. Break off your sins by being righteous and, you, by, and your iniquities, by showing mess to the poor. Perhaps there may be a, a, a lengthening of your prosperity. Now, Daniel, after he had interpreted everything, and when the king was satisfied, and when the king had the interpretation, Daniel suggested to the king that he, he must uh, repent, so to speak. He must show mess to the poor. Uh, maybe his prosperity was going to be strengthened. But the king did not obey. He chose not to listen to the wisdom of Daniel. So the difference between Nebuchadnezzar and Pharaoh is that Pharaoh accepted the wisdom of God. He did not say, I don't know you. you are, are you an economist? You are just a prisoner. You just interpreted the dreams of my servants. Uh, what can you tell us? But it saved the economy of Egypt just because the king listened. Well, on the other side, Nebuchadnezzar, because of his pride, he ended up living like an animal. If you read the following chapters. Why? Because he did not listen to the Lord. Despite the exhibition, despite that Daniel exhibited the power of God, the king refused to acknowledge the living God. So why am I sharing this message? I'm sharing this message to show to our people and to show to those who are living in the world and those who are on authority that there is God on the throne, the God of wisdom, the God of all knowledge, the God of the God who is the possessor of all power. And that some of the things which are happening in our nations, which are happening in our communities, is not because there are no people who are unlearned. It's not because God is not there, but it is because 
Sometimes our leaders, they don't want to listen to the counsel of God. And their focus is on themselves. Their focus is on the power. Their focus in what they, is on what they want to achieve. So sometimes the wisdom of God will go unnoticed and the nations, the communities will live in pain. Yet God has got answers. This message also comes to let the nations and to let the people who are on authority that there's God who is a king over all. He is the king of kings. If they can only look unto him as their source of strength, the source of wisdom, they can rule, reign, and lead with great wisdom. This is the message that I want to present to our leaders, wherever they are in different capacities, that God, from the beginning, he was interested and he is still interested in the affairs of people. And the great wisdom comes from God, despite whatever we can acquire in order to lead or to guide. That in order to partake from God's wisdom, you need to come to him and believe in him. I introduce you to the King of Kings, who is above every kings, who is above every lords, whom, who are ruling or reigning here on earth. And Jesus' name is Jesus Christ. He rule and reign with peace. You can receive him and he can lead you. May God bless our leaders. May God bless those who are on authority. May God give them wisdom to rule and to lead while guided by the Lord. And the nations will move in the right direction. And our main nation Zimbabwe, I'm praying for it that God will be the leader in our nation. This is not to say those who are going to lead are not necessary. For he is the one who put the leaders and remove and put the new. The throne of the Lord should be on the center of the reigning of a nation. God bless you for taking your time to listen to this message. In Jesus' name.